Wait, how can a prediction that's 94% accurate be a total failure? I know it sounds crazy, but this sneaky trap shows up everywhere in data science, from spotting fraud to discovering new medicines. And trust me, you do not want to be fooled by it. Stick around, because in just a minute you'll see how a model that looked like a genius was actually doing absolutely nothing, and how one tiny tweak turned disaster into a breakthrough. Before we dive in, if you love uncovering these behind-the-scenes secrets of AI and data science, hit like right now, share this with a friend who geeks out on this stuff, and don't miss a second, because the twist at the end is the part everyone wishes they knew sooner. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's talk about a huge, kind of sneaky problem in the world of data science. What happens when the information you're working with is just completely lopsided? It's a challenge that pops up everywhere, you know, from spotting fraud to finding new medicines, but the ways to fix it are actually pretty cool. So let's get into it. But first, I've got a question for you, a bit of a riddle. How on earth can a prediction that's 94% accurate be a total absolute failure? I know, it sounds nuts, right? But stick with me because the answer is wild and it's gonna show you just how easily data can fool us. So picture this, there's this insurance company, right? and they've got mountains of data on their customers. They want to use all that info to figure out one simple thing. Who's going to buy caravan insurance? It's a basic yes or no question. So they took all that data and plugged it into some of their best predictive models. Okay, so they run the numbers and the results pop up. And that first number, wow, 93.9% .9 accuracy. You're thinking, we nailed it, an A+. But then your eyes drift down to that second number and your heart just sinks. The model only found Wait for it, 1.69% of the people who actually bought the insurance. I mean, come on, it had one job. So what gives? What went so wrong? And here's the twist. It wasn't the model's fault. Not really. The real bad guy in this story was the data we gave it. Turns out it was super, super lopsided. Now this lopsided thing has a fancy name, class imbalance. But forget the jargon. All it means is you have a ton of one thing and just a tiny little bit of another. You know, like a zillion no's and only a handful of yeses. And this imbalance, well, it turns our smart computer model into a lazy slacker. It figures out a cheat code to get an A plus without actually learning anything. And check this out. This is just how lopsided we're talking. A measly 6% of people bought the insurance. 94% didn't. So the model, being lazy, took a shortcut. It just said nope to every single person. And hey, it was right 94% of the time. It got this amazing grade for doing basically nothing and completely missing the one group we actually cared about. So how do we outsmart our lazy model? Okay, fix number one is actually so simple, you're gonna love this. We don't even have to touch the model. We just change the rules of the game. We're gonna move the goalposts. So you know how most models by default will only say yes if they're like 50% plus sure? Well, with our data, the model was basically never that sure. So we thought, wait a minute, what if we just lower the bar. We literally told it, hey, listen, if you're even just a little bit sure, like 6.4%, just flag them. And boom, look at the difference. We went from finding less than 10% of buyers to over 60%. That's insane, just by tweaking one little number. All right, that first fix was all about how we interpret the results. But this next batch of fixes, oh, this is where we get our hands dirty. We're going to reshape the data before the model even sees it. The best way to think about it is like you're a coach and you're trying to balance the teams for a fair game. So you've got three main plays. First up is downsampling. That's where you look at the giant no team and say, okay, a bunch of you guys sit this one out just to even the numbers. Then there's upsampling. This is the opposite. You take your tiny yes team and basically clone your players until you've got a full roster. And then there's this really clever one called smote. It's like creating synthetic players. It looks at your real yes players and creates new believable players that are a mix of their skills. The goal for all three, give the little guy a fighting chance. Okay, now for our final fix. And honestly, this one might be the most powerful of them all. We're not gonna change the data this time. Nope, we're gonna change the model's motivation. We're gonna teach it that some mistakes are way worse than others. We are raising the stakes. It's like we're having a little chat with the model. We can actually program it and say, listen to me, if you miss someone who is actually going to buy insurance, that's a massive screw up. It's a disaster. So we're going to penalize you 20 times more for that mistake than for just, you know, a false alarm. And the result? Absolutely staggering. 
a standard off-the-shelf model found maybe 15.5% of the buyers. Not great. But our new model, the one that understood consequences, it found almost 74% of them. Just by making one mistake more expensive, we forced the model to finally, finally focus on that tiny group we cared about. So what's the big lesson here? It's that chasing that one big, shiny accuracy number is a trap. It can be so, so misleading. You have to step back and ask, what am I actually trying to do here? And by mixing and mashing the best of these tricks, the team got their final result. They built a model that could find 78% of the buyers. Just think about that for a second. They went from a totally useless 2% all the way to 78%. It's a complete game changer. And it's all because they figured out how to deal with this lopsided data problem. And look, this isn't just some weird story about caravan insurance, right? This problem is everywhere. Think about online ads. How many people actually click? Almost nobody. Or medical research, trying to find that one miracle molecule out of thousands. It's a needle in a haystack. Or even fraud detection. Thankfully, almost all of our credit card swipes are legit. In every single one of these cases, a lazy model that just predicts the normal thing is going to look great on paper, but be totally useless in the real world. So, the big takeaway is this. You can't just trust that one big accuracy number. You have to dig deeper and ask, are we finding the needle in the haystack? That's what really matters. It makes us way smarter about how we use data. And that brings me to my last question for you. Now that you know about lopsided data, this sneaky problem, where do you see it hiding out in your world? Congrats, you made it to the end of this episode. That already puts you way ahead of the curve. This was just one episode of our playlist, AI Explained to Your Grandma, where we turn complicated AI into simple, clear stories anyone can understand. If you enjoyed this, don't stop here. Check out the next episode in the playlist to keep building your AI intuition. Like this video so more people can join the journey. Share it with someone who thinks AI is too complicated. And subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. Remember, AI is shaping your world every day. The only question is, do you want to just use it or really understand it? See you in the next episode.